Now, please give a very warm welcome to Lily James, Bella Heathcote, Jack Houston, and Douglas Booth. You can go warmer than that, surely. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. <laughs> Hi. Um, by the way, I'm going to be asking you for questions in about 15 minutes, so please get thinking, because there's nothing more awkward than a silent audience. Um, okay, <laughs> let's start then. Um, you guys are taking on a version of one of the most lo loved novels of all time. Did you have any trepidation? Jack, let's start with you. Um, uh, no, you know what? I, I'd actually heard of uh, of the book before, and um, it actually had uh, been through uh, a few different hands. Uh, David Russell at one point was attached, and Natalie Portman, and thing like that. And I think we were really lucky because it came about that it had worked when we were all eligible. Um, but um, I think initially, hearing Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, you'd sort of laugh a little and think it was like a B movie that you'd sort of. <laughs> You know, maybe not, but actually it, it works so well. And then you read it and you realize how well it works. And it was such a sort of good marriage of the two. And it stays very truthful and faithful to Jane Austen. And you don't lose Pride and Prejudice from it at all. And Bella, I know that you're a massive fan of the mini series of Pride and Prejudice. Who wasn't? Um, so how did you feel kind of approaching a, a new version of Pride and Prejudice? Um, I, I felt like the zombies actually made me feel more comfortable in a weird way because I, I'm so obsessed with the BBC version <laughs> that had it been just regular Pride and Prejudice, I wouldn't have gone anywhere near it. So, um, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So, I, yeah, I like the zombie version. Mm. I felt like, why not go do something where I get to kick ass? And, like, <laughs> Jane's the sweet sister, but she also beats the crap out of things. Yeah. Um, I am something of a Puritan as well when it comes to adaptations, but I thought the humour was so much more enhanced in this than any other adaptation that I'd ever seen. Lily, would you agree with that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's very funny. I think um, we weren't winking at the camera. We take the story really seriously and that humour arises out of the absurdity of the situations. Um, in a way, the zombie world actually heightens the themes and the humour. Matt Smith's very funny. He, he winks so at the camera. Funny. He really does. <laughs> yeah. um, and what was like your favourite line from the book that you sort of got to zombify up? What, did you have any? Um, well, there's, there's the famous one at the beginning of the book, mm -hmm. isn't it? It's... Uh, yeah. what, what, yeah. it's uh, Truth University told, told that a zombie in possession of brains, brains must be in want of more brains. What <laughs> but in the book, it's it's a Truth University told that something to do with marriage, right? Yeah, a woman. A woman thingy thingy. Yeah. <laughs> we a saw man, this film a, a year and a half ago. Okay. <laughs> a man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. Spot the Austrian yeah, over here. Thingy thingy. <laughs> Um, now, already, just having seen the film, all I could think about was how I can't wait to see the gag reel already. So, who got, like, nearly sliced with a samurai sword? Who got punched in the eye by accident? Who, whose head got stomped? Who, whose think... head got stomped? Yeah, I stamped on an extra's head. <laughs> by accident. No! <laughs> but I, I did it, it on dummy. purpose. <laughs> <laughs> did they sue you? No, it was a total accident. We, we, I galloped in on this horse, and there was this field of dead bodies and loads of them were dummies and they were like bleeding and they had like axes sticking out of their heads and I just assumed that no one would be lying face down in the dirt or <laughs> surrounded by dummies so I went over in my big boots and I was like Ugh. and then everyone around the camera was like she just stamped on someone's head <laughs> And it wasn't funny at the time, but it was fine because he was fine. I mean, yeah. He was a professional. He didn't even make a sound. He didn't even didn't move. move. <laughs> um, Douglas, is it fair to say that Mr. Bingley was possibly the worst fighter of the lot? You had to be rescued quite a few times in this film. He was pretty helpless, <laughs> yes. Um, but that was kind of what I loved about it. It was refreshing because often it's the guys saving girls in movies. And mm -hmm. for once, it was the girls saving the guys. And I thought that was... Brilliant and very sexy, yeah. 
It was sexy. Um, and Lily and Bella, you obviously had to learn sort of self-defense for this. Probably you were the ones that had to demonstrate it most in the film. So if someone came at you now, could you, could you handle them? Yeah, yes. I, the I mean, don't worry, we haven't got anyone running out. <laughs> you know, put us to the test. I would mess with them. <laughs> yeah. They just did that, someone ran at you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because we have a member in the audience who's going to test this. <laughs> and how long did you have to kind of practice these fight sequences? And presumably they're so like, heavily choreographed. How long did it take you? Yeah, they, they were definitely choreographed. Um, we did. We both did our own thing for a few months prior to the film, and then there was a month where all the sisters got together and did a kind of ninja boot camp with all the specific choreography and weapons training, and it was, it was great. I, I was in the pub. Was, <laughs> I didn't do much fighting. We could tell. <laughs> and whose whose ass did you prefer kicking the most? I thought you whose ass did you prefer? I was like, well. <laughs> Full stop. Well. Next Doug, question. You answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what was what, who's, 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 who's uh, whose ass did I prefer kicking? Yes. I actually love fighting Darcy. There's this yeah. great scene where in the book they he proposes and she declines and. It's a battle of words. But in this version, all that internal conflict and tension and frustration comes out. And I just throw books at his head. And then it, turn, it ends out like a fight to kill. And it's, it's really... It was, I loved being upset. Sexy. Yeah. It's an incredible scene. I mean, it's, there's so much sexual tension yeah. there. It's exactly how you'd want to be proposed to, I think. <laughs> well, that says more about you than you <laughs> it does. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and Jack, you are sort of taking on one of the most famous villains, I think, of all time. And I knew that I hated him. I knew that I shouldn't like him. Yet you still made me fall for him. How did you do that? Um, I, I think it's uh, probably just playing him honest for most of the movie. Uh -huh. um, but uh, I think the character of Wickham in this version is probably the most changed of all the characters. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people haven't seen the film, so I won't say anything about that. But it's, uh, it, you know, the, the nice thing about the movie is it stays very truthful to all the characters, all the character arcs, all the, like, the conflict, what is going on. Um, but, you know, uh, Wickham has a, a few more tricks up his sleeve. Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can't say anything, I know. Lena uh, Headey, who we see um, as Lady Catherine de Bourgh in the movie and currently terrifying us in Game of Thrones as Cersei, with the eye patch on, genuinely how intimidating was she in the flesh? Really intimidating. <laughs> but she just has this energy about yeah. her because she's just so one it's like, almost like Wonder Woman, isn't she? She's going, yeah. So cool when she came to set for the, the few weeks that she was there filming with us. It was just awesome. She's such a legend. Um, Do you watch Game of Thrones? Were you sort of like fangirling her? No. <laughs> I've never seen it yet, but I'm, I can't wait to watch it because I know it's amazing. Oh. There were a lot of fun filming those. Those, those, those days when we were all together. Was, that, was, <laughs> that was Matt Smith at his best as well. <laughs> Actually, yeah, Matt Smith is an absolute gem in this film, as the kind of odious Mr. Collins. Um, what was your sort of favourite scene to film? You, you have so much going on, but you must have had one moment. Or oh, I guess yours is the fight scene, Lily. Well, I liked fighting with the sisters. It's, mm -hmm. It was so fun. We are like this girl band of ninjas. Um, <laughs> and and it, was, it was amazing. We do all this, like, slow-mo walking. Um. <laughs> Yeah, that was great. I remember Burr was like, come watch this, and showed us the monitor, and he's like, this is going to be in the trailer. And I was like, what? It's like us walking in slow motion. I was like, yeah. <laughs> that was pretty good. And Douglas, what about you, your favourite scene? Um, I think, actually, one of my favourite was watching them film that one where they kind of form this pentagram of death, and then they, they worked so hard to choreograph it, and it was just, it was pretty, pretty impressive. Um, and that and just that scene in any scene where we were all in together because we, we all get on so well, a lot of us... Do we? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah a, lot, a lot of us are friends. I've known Lily since she was at drama school and um, I've worked with Matt before and, and lots of us, me and Jack and Bella became fast friends, all of us. So it was like a pure, it was pure joy to go to um, work every day. So anything when we were all in at one time, it just was the right old hoot. It was great. Um, Douglas, you've described Austin's uh, work as sort of social commentary. So do you think that Pride and Prejudice and Zombies is a reflection of society's obsession with zombies or a prediction of a zombie revolution possibly still to come? Douglas, that's for you. That's me. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, 
Well, I think people. I, I think the, I'm not quite sure. I'm going to answer what I think the question was. Um, the, which Sorry, is, I was no, no, no. Yeah, you have to stop talking to me, Lily. Um, I think people are fascinated with zombies because, in some way, they kind of they have some weird fascination with it because they kind of think it could come true in some way. Maybe not the undead, but some disease that sort of messes with people's brains and sends them crazy and makes everyone attack each other. And <laughs> you know, it's quite scary when some of these diseases break out and they spread really quick. So. I think that's why people believe it. Some part of sci-fi that they believe really could come true. Mm. Um, yeah. Bella, who would you want by your side? What celebrity would you want by your side in a zombie Lily. attack? You do oh. kick ass. I choose Bella as well. <laughs> we really know. did. We did. We did like pr- proper. And the Rock. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say the Rock. Yeah. Giant Johnson and Lily James. <laughs> <laughs> the Rock. Yeah, because he would tear those zombies apart. Yeah. Stallone. <laughs> um, That's how you've just totally gone back on me now. <laughs> no, you're there too, babe. You're there too. Um, the author of Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, Seth Graham Smith, said that Pride and Prejudice was just ripe for gore and senseless violence, which I love. Um, what other story do you think sort of fits that description? What other films do you think would benefit from added zombies? All of them. I think they should have done War and Peace and Zombies. I think, I think they just forgot <laughs> to put them in. I said the three, just stick with the girl power thing. You do the three sisters, check out the three sisters yeah. and zombies. There you go. Then you guys can all work together again. Yeah. <laughs> Shakespeare, any Shakespeare. Yeah. And where would you go if the world was overrun by zombies? I mean, would you kind of Shaun of the Dead it and head to the pub? Or would you Pride and Prejudice and Zombies it and... This Douglas is gets good. up at the dimension of the pub there. It's pretty good down here in the Apple Store. We're kind of underground. Are we up here? Uh, are we upstairs? <laughs> are we upstairs or are we downstairs? We've been doing so many interviews we don't even know what's up and down. I'd want to be a Lady Catherine, Catherine's country manor, I think. Yeah, um, far away. <laughs> did the rap party live up to like one of Mr Bingley's lavish balls? Yes. Lily can't even remember the rap party. That's how good it was. <laughs> well, we, had on a bo- we had on a boat in the Thames. Oh, yeah. Um, which I thought was quite a dangerous idea. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, we did that. And then we went to some bar and we played, like, ping pong. And it was really fun. It was good fun. There's been a lot of parties. Um, we had a great Halloween party as well. Halloween fell over the filming of this at Matt's house, which was great. And what kind of zombie research did you do? Did you do any zombie research? Did We've you met a lot of zombies. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, they, you know, and they were really forthcoming. They told us a lot about what it was like to be a zombie. And, uh, you know, good people. Yeah. <laughs> no films that you watched for uh, the making of it? I went on a zombie experience once where I just got chased by zombies and got to shoot them with paintballs. You did it. Really? Yeah. You I, paid to do that by choice. I mean, no, it was free. <laughs> That's amazing. But still, That's like, scary. Did, you didn't get to... Yeah, it was terrifying, but they didn't offer you that sort of, you know, warm-up to this? No. <gasps> you should complain. Yeah, they sh- I will complain. <laughs> I did one. I did uh, How to Survive a Zombie Attack, uh, where a bunch of... You have to go together and do a bunch of puzzles, and, like, you get given different <laughs> keys. I swear, yeah. I'm a, <laughs> I That's that not stuff. puzzles. That's how you survive a <laughs> zombie attack. It's like 20 people I did, like, on a bachelor party. It was, like, the weirdest thing. It was fun. Um, I am now going to open up questions to the audience. So if you have a question, please put your hand up. And we've got roving mics, so just wait until the mics get to you. How important was it for you to convey the kind of female empowerment side of it? Very important. Um, I feel like it's inherent in it, in the story anyway. But it was, you know, it was was what drew me to the project, to actually be able to be, like, one of the girls who gets to kick ass, not just one, but, like, all five of us, all five sisters... Like supporting each other and like taking on all the zombies, saving the world, saving all the boys. Like that was, yeah, the major appeal of the job to me. Yeah, and Liz Bennett is already the most um, incredible character, way ahead of her t- time, so independent, fierce, spirited. And then this, that, that is just taken even further because she's a warrior and she can fight and protect herself. Um, so it was that again, that was what drew me to this film. Thank you. And why was... Um, I have another question. Why was um, Liz... She was quite angry in this version, wasn't she? Why do you think she was? I think because, again, in the, <clears throat> in the Pride and Prejudice, everything's contained, and her frustration sort of... She sort of, she sort of uses wit and humour to sort of 
get through and, and make light of it in a way. But in this version, because I had to fight and because it was life and death and there was a war and there were zombies, you know, her frustration just came out. Mm -hmm. And I think that made her more angry and fiercer. And um, I just genuinely think it's because I could express you know, how angry she is. Mm. Externalise it all. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, at the back by the pole, just wait for a mic to come to you. A question for Lily, and again, it's not really to do with the film, but what are you looking forward to for Romeo and Juliet? Oh, um... <laughs> I'm really excited to do a play again. I haven't done a play in a few years now, and um, uh, I want to do Shakespeare. Um... I'm very, I'm, I'm intimidated, I'm, 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 I'm scared, but, and I'll be working with Richard again, and Ken Brown is directing it, so it'll be like the old team getting back together. Come and see it. There's a gentleman just in the middle here with a mic. Yeah. Hello. Um, I'm studying filmmaking at uh, Listen Grove, Wayas, so I was wanting to put to the panel a question, which director would you like to work with after this film? Thank you. A director would be good. No. Uh, David Lynch. David Lynch. Twin Peaks. Oh, be in Twin Peaks. That would be awesome. I was like, I'll play a tree. I'll bring coffee. <laughs> whatever you, you need. I'm about to work with Edgar Wright, and he's actually always been someone I've really wanted to work with. I think he's just such a visionary and so unique and exciting. You just want to do a zombie film with Edgar Wright. I mean, you want to be dead, too. Dead, yeah. <laughs> I would love to work with Paul Thomas Anderson. I think that would be really amazing. Yeah, I'd say uh, Wes Anderson would be a fun one as well. I don't know. It's a good question. A lot. Everyone. <laughs> Next question. Oh, yeah, we have one just in the front here. Hi. Um, I was just wondering what your dream role would be. It's a toughie. <laughs> it's a really hard question, that. Um... <laughs> Someone answer it, though. <laughs> I mean... Silence. <laughs> a I think, good do you know what? I think that sometimes just having a dream role is sort of too much of a goal, whereas I want to just always play different roles, and from now on I'm, I really want to break yeah. away from what I've been doing. I've done a lot of peer drama, and I'm, I think my dream roles will be to keep mixing it up. Yeah, v variation is, is, is just one of the best things for, for an actor. Um, uh, and I, I always really like playing real people for some reason. There's kind of lots of stuff to draw on, and you know, I, I like playing real people. So maybe I, when I was 17, I played Boy George. Um, cool, it's amazing. And, and a biopic about him, and I'd love to maybe take on another like really iconic um, character. Yeah, yeah, that like pushes me completely out of my comfort zone. It would be cool, wouldn't it? Uh, do we have a question down at the front here? Yeah, yes. This girl just here? Yeah. Hi, if you could be another character in the film, so not your own, which character would you be? Ooh. Just Bannon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wigan. <laughs> Darcy. Parson Collins. Oh, See if yes. I can out fruit Matt. I bet you I could. Fruit, fruit, fruit. I reckon seven. Yeah. <laughs> Is it because you like the hat that he gets to wear? He just had so much fun with that role. I, so I just, I, and whenever he, whenever he comes on screen, it just fills me with joy. So um, I guess, yeah, that's, that's one of my favorite characters. Mm -hmm. Good question. Um, we've got someone right at the, the very, right. oh, okay, we'll go you first, right, and then the, someone right at the back. <laughs> um, me and my friends go to Brit school and we um, all take acting classes. Um, and we were just wondering how you started out acting. I, I lo I've loved acting for a long time, and I'm dyslexic, so it kind of pushed me into a more creative area. And actually, I used to want to be a jazz musician, because I love Louis Armstrong, so I took up the trumpet. But then I got cast to school play, and I fell in love with acting, and that was, that was it, really. And I, I, I went to Junior Guildhall as a drama school in London, and some friends there had agents, and so it introduced me to the idea of... I didn't even know agents existed. I was, you know, I was 14. Um, and then, by fluke, got a good agent, and then auditioned for a year, got absolutely nothing, and eventually got a job when I was 16, and I've just, you know, been, it's been going on since then, really. Yeah. What about you, Lily? How did, how did... Uh, I, yeah, I sort of always liked um, acting and singing and dancing and stuff, and then um, I wasn't sure I necessarily definitely wanted to be an actor, and then I auditioned for drama schools, and I, um, I went to Guildhall. Um, 
and the audition process is really intense and you it, I just totally loved it and knew that I wanted to focus on it uh, I um, was always uh, acting at school and then I went to sort of like a pre-drama school and then I went into the theatre. I was sort of stage managing. Then I was understudying for a while and did a lot of stuff there. And then finally, you get cast in something. The most important thing is just to stick with it, because you'll I hear no about ninety nine point nine percent of the yeah. time. But it's that point one percent that you get the yes that can really help. So it's I guess sticking with it. Yeah, I was at drama school and like my second year at drama school after dropping out of university. Um, Someone overheard me at the gym talking about acting and said that they'd be my agent. And I didn't get anything for like a year and I was like, she's going to drop me. And then I got this awesome commercial, car commercial, where I had to have like pillows strapped to me. It was something about like the safety of the airbag and I was like the physical embodiment. You're going to test on me. <laughs> it was on really YouTube bad. As as I, get out of this door. <laughs> I think that's... Sorry. No, that's it. Just like, and then it didn't work again for like another six months and... Thank God I'm here now, not still doing, you know, having pillows strapped to me. Because <laughs> there's so much rejection, so much rejection. Just be prepared to say no and try not to take it personally because it's not about you at all. Yeah. It's, and it's, it's like all of, it's interesting that all of us have gone a different route to get there. I think there's no right way and, um, yeah, just keep at it. Mm -hmm. And we've got time for one more question. Um, this girl at the back with a sort of zigzaggy T-shirt. Yeah. Douglas. Um, Hello. How has this role compared to others you've done in the past? Um, what I loved about Bingley is that he's actually really kind and lovable. And I've, I've played a couple of not very nice people uh, in the lo like last couple of jobs and in the Riot Club or in, 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 and then there were none or uh, Jupiter Ascending. So it was amazing actually just to come and, and be the lovable puppyish uh, Bingley. And all I had to do was just get on with everyone rather than wind each other up every day, you know, like, so that was really good. Thank you very much to all thank of you. you. I hope you enjoyed our chat about Pride and Prejudice. Let's give a very warm thank you to Lily, Bella, Jack and Douglas. Thank, thank you, you so much. for coming. Thank you.